Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. Before we jump to the good stuff, I wanted to do a review or a better video. I don't think I've ever done a great video uh, of the winch setup that I have for this uh, truck. And, you know, I used it on the last truck, and that's the beauty of it, is it's interchangeable. So, we'll go through what it is, uh, how I've kind of put it together to make it work for this pickup. Some of the advantages and some of the disadvantages. But first off, I'll get this cover off. Now, this is completely custom. There's a company that's cover all something like that. I know that sounds cheesy, but they actually I took measurements, put it on the website, they drew up a very basic not CAD drawing, but you know, uh, whatever software they use, basic drawing showed grommet location, sent it to me for approval, I made a few adjustments, they did that, sent it back. I didn't spend more than 50 bucks on this. I've had it for about four years. There's some damage here, and that is one of the disadvantages. That's from going through the creek, which is slowly getting pounded down. So my approach angle is pretty crummy when this big old hog is sitting out front. I've done a few things to try and mitigate that. But anyway, that's why there's some holes in the cover. But in reality, it's here to keep road spray and UV light off. Keep the water off, keep the UV light off. Make this stuff last as long as possible. So, and the beauty of it is it's secured with some very cheap, well, nothing's very cheap anymore, but cheap in relative price and quality bungee cords I've messed around with the cinch straps or the, the cinch ring around here and decided that was just useless didn't do anything for me So having the grommets in the right spot I even bought a grommet kit and punched a few extras so that I'd have them in the right spot makes it easy so we've got the Badland ZXR12000 from Harbor Freight this is the one that goes on sale for about 300 bucks, fairly regularly. You can spend twice that much and get their next, what is that, Apex, I think, that has the synthetic wire, and it's a different design on the motor shape and all of that. Whether there's that big of a difference, I don't know. I do know I'm getting to the point where there's a fray in the wire right down here, just right out towards the end. And I'm not going to go a hell of a lot longer without replacing this. Now, I've gotten at least six years of good good work out of it. Uh, and I'm going to go with that synthetic uh, rope wire, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it'll be a hell of a lot easier to manage, to spool, lighter to take out. And because I cover it, it's going to be UV protected. They come with a sleeve that covers, I think, the first foot. Well, all I need to cover is the first four inches. Go Anyway, 12,000 pounds. I bought the carrier itself. I don't think I popped for the worn because, of course, their prices are crazy, but it's, very, it's, it's their design. The rest of this is custom. I built this tray so that I could put an inverter up here and the charger for my 80 volt uh, equipment specifically the chainsaw uh, in that's where I'm going to use this so I can be out during fire season where they've got full hood owl no spark you know producing engines period I can run that battery saw and when the battery is done slip it in here charge it and I can charge several batteries to f completion before I ever even dream about needing to start the truck so that's pretty nice so in this rack you're not gonna find anywhere that's a hundred percent custom and I'm a little proud of it there's thing I mean the welds could be better but I didn't care I was welding galvanized which yes you're not supposed to do but it's what I had it's what I used so anyhow the setup get in here and take a better peek you obviously need a front hitch with the way I've chosen to do this and that impacts your approach angle anytime you're going through a ditch climbing over a hilltop any of that you've got to think about this stuff sticking out here 
So I said I've tried to mitigate some of that. Obviously I didn't want the winch way down here so that's why I bought this big chunk of pig iron and that is actually rated for 10,000 pounds. The extra 2,000 that the winch is rated for, whoop de doo It is not. That is a solid shank there. Thick, thick tubing. And you can see that nice gusset back there. This isn't going anywhere. That doesn't flex when I'm pulling. The hitch is a high quality one. It was from a place out in oh, southern Washington that's specifically designed for these trucks with the diesel in them. I mean, most trucks you won't have a problem. This thing, because of one of the coolers that sits so low, it was a pain in the ass to find. So, that's how it's set up, and then the winch goes in right here. Pretty straightforward. Wiring, I want to say, was 4.0. Not 4 gauge, 4 0. I mean, you're almost up to arc welding leads at that point because I wanted the winch motor to get hot. Well, the motor's on the other side, but you get my point. I want it to get hot before that wire gets hot. I do not want to melt wires. That's bad. Very bad. So, ideally, this is easily removable. And it is. I'm using a industrial style charge connector right there. We have those on the electric forklifts at work. Okay, that's the same thing. So when I'm ready to unplug this, I tuck that wire back up, snap it into place up behind the air dam here, and then all you see is that, that hitch hanging down. Now I run this, you know, about half a year or more with it on here, just because why not? So it works. It works pretty damn well. Uh, so the positives. I'll go through that real quick before I show you under the hood how this is set up. The positives are it's removable. Okay. You pull that pin. You can slide the whole thing out. A negative. Heavy. This upper piece with the carrier is north of 100 pounds. Well north. I want to say about 115 you had that big chunk of pig iron, and this whole assembly is getting close to 135, 140 pounds. So, yeah, that's heavy. The plus is, with this setup, you can actually separate these into two assemblies. I'm a stubborn shit, and I don't. I just basically straddle it and, you know, suspend it from my arms so that I'm not actually lifting anything, but it's heavy. It's definitely heavy. But it's removable, so... When I'm not using it, as you know, in another month I probably won't be using it much, I can just throw it in my storage unit and have all this stuff put away. It's all contained. No big deal. So, positive, again, is the fact that it's, it's out in front of the truck. It's easy. It's easy to set up your winch lines, it's easy to set up your pulls so that you're relatively straight, except when you're dealing with a 20 foot long truck. That's where you've got to use some snatch blocks, and you guys will see in the video, I go out of my way to avoid that. I would even fight a cable where it's not quite a direct pull to just avoid the time that it takes to set up a snatch block. Some people are going to say you're an idiot, you should just take the time, and maybe, but there's enough brute strength in here, again, with the later footage you'll see the log that I pull there's a lot of brute strength to this and honestly if I can save some time and use brute strength without tearing up my truck yeah so that's another positive is you don't tear up your truck you know you're not most of the time there's one scene where you'll see me give it a little tug with a pickup to break it through a, a rough spot but most of the time you're not doing that. You're not doing those running starts where everything jolts and, and all that kind of stuff. You just got a smooth, even pull with this. Uh, with a wireless remote, which I did pick up for this, uh, you can actually activate it from way up the hill, 50, 60 feet away when you're trying to set a cable and, and redo everything. Downside is there's a delay. At that distance, you're about a second delay, you know, from on off. So you got to kind of plan that in. Uh, this is very secure, okay, so I've got to tighten down. Yes, if somebody really wants to try and steal it, what they're going to have to do is pull the cover off, release the tension on it, and then figure out how to deal with those bolts. 
or uh, hitch locks because that's what those are those are locks in that amount of time since I park it out there and my bedrooms right around that corner the amount of time it takes them to figure out how to do that I'm gonna wake up I'm gonna hear it and they're gonna be uh, facing somebody who's not real happy and armed so there's that no big deal all right so the wiring is run between the radiator the core support and this fender support just down and out okay the real meat and potatoes is up here and what I did was to try and keep it as clean as I could under the hood so that whoop uh, doesn't help to be on a tripod right now so that if I ever have to have this worked on in a shop they're not gonna chew me out for it and it's not gonna be in their way so got these leads I had to build that the bracket for the circuit breaker this is not the circuit breaker that comes with the winch this is a replacement one this is a marine grade and if I'm not gonna be using it for a while that's how I'll travel okay it's protected if I you know cut a cable up there and short something out and this is on it's gonna trip but if I'm you know traveling if I've got this for some reason and I don't want it to be a, a tempting thing to play with just trip that but most of the time I keep it on so that was the only thing I had to build was just and all that is is a piece of sheet aluminum I put the uh, negative terminal to the actual uh, jump starting ground lug that was already here so that was super simple and then I routed the positive cable down underneath the battery box here where this lid comes off Oh, not well with one hand but I just went straight to an existing lug right there super simple sorry you guys are wobbling around wish I'd noticed that sooner so I had to file out where was it or did I yes I did I had to file out that one spot in the, the lid to the battery box just to accommodate the bend in the cable there. But otherwise, you don't even know this is here. So, yeah, the later model your truck is, the more of a pain in the ass it's going to be like, like this, where you've got the lid and the little, you know, electronic control center. This does not have dual batteries because it's a half ton doesn't need them therefore when I'm pulling I run the engine now modern diesels of course we all know have a lot of emissions controls on them and it's pretty widely understood that idling is not great for them uh, what I will say is I try to abide by that but I did this past week about three hours of idle time uh, as I was pulling logs and the uh, it only gained several percent on the soot count soot load I use the banks to monitor that so while I know it's not great for it and I know that uh, the EGR was pumping good stuff good in quotes back into the engine the whole time I was doing that but the single battery and the ability for this to draw in excess of 200 amps in theory it's going to trip that at 200 but you get my point you don't want to be up on the hill and all of a sudden whoopsie daisy I can't start my truck so it just runs when I'm pulling so that's about it that was probably a little longer than I expected uh, to do this but in reality any truck you have that has a little bit of ground clearance if you can get a front hitch you can put together something like this that's easily removed and I've always had the fantasy of running some heavy wire all the way to the back so that I could you know do a backwards pull too but wire got expensive and I got lazy so it hasn't happened so the last thing I'll note, because it just came to mind, is when I go to the synthetic rope, you've got to change the fair lead out. Uh, you won't have rollers anymore. It's just an aluminum block that, uh, you know, is smooth. You can see the cable from sideways pulls has just marred this up. That would shred 
one of those synthetic ropes in a heartbeat you just completely screw yourself so I will have to pick that up as well but the plus there another plus uh, beyond the strength and the ease of handling is it's 15 feet longer on the same drum so anyway it's enough of me a jabbering I'll uh, cut to some footage of this thing in action Alright, check out this whale turd of a log. There's 50 feet of cable down to the junction there, and then another, we're going to say 15 feet of cable out from my winch. I'm going to say there's somewhere around 50 feet of log there, and somewhere around 20 inches at the base. Best guess. I've already brought in, brought it about 40 feet down the hill. Let's see how the other 40 feet goes. I can avoid the camera going down the hill. I'm going to have to reposition the truck. See if I can't pull that thing over this way a little bit. As soon as I clear that madrone and that fur, the truck is going to do the work from there. But I'm going to have to reposition this thing and see, see if I can get the right angle on the dangle, as they say. So I need the truck to be about, ah, probably 10 feet over this way. We'll see how that goes. Ah, 
This hillside's steep and I'm getting tired already. I don't know. I don't know if I gained enough here. I think I'm going to have to take the, uh, the 50 foot intermediate out and just run the winch. sucks because I'm pulling at the wrong angle. And now it's going to go on the wrong side of that little fur. Boy, I'm having fun, are you?
master. against the damn tree. That's awesome. You son of a bitch. Hey, you loosen that up, I push on the end of that Madrone, maybe that front will kick over. Hey! Hillside is such a pain in the ass. I loosen that cable and put a wedge cut. Just leave this long and this 45. Yeah, we could do that. Hopefully it won't bark that fur up too bad.
Nice. Watch yourself. I'm going to try and use the truck to jerk it past the tree and just keep on going. You want to reposition your camera? Oh. <laughs> to record this ridiculousness? Yeah. That's probably not a bad idea. synthetic ones because they're easier to work with. Rope? Yeah, and I'm about ready. They claim they're 40% stronger than steel as long as you keep dirt from building up in them.
ran over the stake, but not the tree. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> That's funny. I knew I was getting close, but once that big thing started to move, I'm like, I ain't stopping. 